Hi friends, Dr. Marta Perez here. Welcome back to my channel where we discuss everything about pregnancy, birth, postpartum. Usually I do educational videos every Friday. Don't forget to hit subscribe. But today's video is gonna be kind of different and I'm gonna take you through what I'm packing in my hospital bag. So stay tuned. Before we get started, I'm gonna sit down and tell you a little story. So last time at my last birth, I broke my water early and had my baby preterm. I didn't have a hospital bag packed and we went to the hospital without one and it was totally fine. The hospital has like pretty much everything you could need in an emergency. And so when packing a hospital bag, all I'm thinking of is like, what are the things that I want like for additional comfort and would make my life easier to have? Also, you know, you can always send your partner home for additional supplies and things like that. So I never want anyone to stress too much about packing their hospital bag or what they need or don't need because the hospital has everything you like really need. Like, for example, you know, you get hospital gowns, they have like the little socks for your feet, and they have like every type of personal care item, you know, they have like soap and shampoo and hair combs or brushes and like toothpaste and toothbrush. They're probably not like the ones you want, like they're not like the nicest type, they're like cheap little toothbrushes, you know, so you probably want to pack like your own toiletry bag. You can wear the hospital gowns and that's, if that's all you wear during your hospitalization for like labor and birth, that's fine. So I don't want to freak anyone out or think you like have to have this stuff. I would say that the only thing that I feel like in the modern world you need that the hospital probably doesn't have is a phone charger. The other thing the hospital has is they have, and honestly a lot of people pack a bag with because they have extras, a lot of the things that it takes to do your perineal care. So things like ice packs and um, witch hazel and tux, all of those things and those big panties, the hospital has all those. And I actually prefer the hospital give me a lot of those because they're the same exact ones you could buy, but they're coming from the hospital and you can just take them home. So I usually get some of those to have at home for when I run out of the hospital ones, but I don't bring those to the hospital. Okay, so I'm gonna, when I'm thinking about the hospital bag, I was thinking about kind of three different things. The first thing was what you want to use for labor and delivery, like the process of being in labor and then birth. Two is postpartum stay. And three is things for baby. So number one, things you wanna bring to the hospital for the birth. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know that unfortunately, my second baby now is breech, and so I will be having a scheduled C-section. I tried to get an external cephalic version where they flip the baby. It didn't work. There's technically still time for the baby to flip, but I don't think it is, so I'm preparing to have a C-section. I have videos on both external cephalic version, which I'll link above here, and also on having a C-section, which I'll link above here now. And those will also be in the show notes. So those are super educational videos about those two things. My first birth, I had a vaginal birth. No matter what kind of birth I was anticipating having, guys, I'm not gonna really pack anything for me for before my C-section or during my labor and birth because there's a lot of like fluids and stuff. A hospital gown, the way to go. The hospital socks, the way to go. I'm not gonna get my own hospital gown. Some people do and that's fine, but the hospital gown and the hospital socks, that is gonna be great for me. That is all I'm gonna use. In addition, the hospital panties, are like actually really great. They're very stretchy. They're very high-waisted. They're not durable. <laughs> they fall apart in the washing machine, which I love those hospital pants. I took them home and tried to wash them. They kind of fall apart in the washing machine, but that's all I need for labor. I will say it does make sense to, you know, labor often takes a long time. Bringing like a tablet or your computer to watch like a movie or Netflix, most hospital rooms have a TV in the room, but if you want to watch something, that's a good idea. Bringing chargers. A lot of people bring Bluetooth speakers to play music, which I think is really nice. Some people are very into like having a really nice calming environment in the hospital and they bring like essential oil diffusers. <laughs> it's always nice when I walk in those rooms as the doctor, but I'm not going to bring probably any of that stuff except my laptop. I will probably bring my laptop so that we can watch movies or TV shows. Additionally, a lot of people who are getting inductions of labor. That's going to take a long time. And so bringing like an eye mask or earplugs to help kind of you sleep during your induction when you're comfortable or bringing other things to keep you entertained is probably a good idea. For before birth, my first category, the things I'm going to put in my bag. This is a charger. It charges both my phone and my Apple watch. So I'm gonna put that in. I would put it in my computer, but I have my list of things I'm packing on it. So I'm not putting that in right now. So those are really the only things for me that I'm packing for the before birth part. Cause I'm gonna wear the hospital gown, the hospital panties, those little hospital socks. The one thing to be sure of is that my hospital has 
birthing balls that anyone can use. They get sterilized between patients. There's both the ones you sit on that are a circle and the peanut ball type, which is really great for people who are in labor with an epidural. Um, if you don't have an epidural, you're probably moving around. If you do, the peanut ball keeps your pelvis really open and allows you to access a greater number of like labor positions. If your hospital requires the patient to bring those types of labor balls, I would bring that with you. My hospital doesn't, it has all those for patients, so I don't need to pack them. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna pack for is myself postpartum. I mean, most people are spending the smaller part of their hospitalization for delivery before the baby comes. And the longer part is on the postpartum floor, typically two days, and it can be up to four for a C-section. So you want some things to stay comfortable during that time. Although I said I was gonna do the hospital socks for labor, I'm actually gonna pack these little fuzzy slippers to have to walk around the hospital room for afterwards and postpartum. I'm also gonna wanna change into like some of my own clothes at that point. So this is just a typical nursing bra, like I don't know, from Target or Amazon. It's just a simple one that you pull aside to show your breasts. So I'm gonna pack a nursing bra for myself. I'm actually gonna pack a second one too. Um, and then I'm gonna pack PJs for myself. So I specifically am choosing black PJs. And I'm specifically choosing black PJs because after you have a baby, the amount of vaginal bleeding, whether you have a C-section or a vaginal delivery that you continue having can be really variable. And you know, you're in bed and then you've suddenly passed a lot of blood and stained your clothing. So black is easy. I can get home and wash it if it gets blood on it. I'm also doing a type of PJ that has buttons down the front. I'm planning to breastfeed. And so that will allow me to easily access breastfeeding. So black PJs that have buttons or some other ways to get my breasts out. There are a lot of different styles for, you know, breastfeeding friendly pajamas. This is just a little sweater, kind of like a robe. It is um, gray <laughs> and I just mentioned trying to stay in black, but this one is pretty old, honestly. And if something gets on it, I really don't mind throwing it away. So it's just the one I have. I wasn't going to buy a new black robe. So that's sort of what I'm doing. You don't need a robe. Some people um, might have sweatshirts. They also have those blanket heaters at the hospital. So if you're cold, you get a nice blanket heater. I'd say most people feel hot around the time of delivery. So I don't even know how much I'll use that. Let's see. What else do I need as a postpartum mom? My glasses. And at this point, I'm gonna just tell you that like, I'm gonna pack my little toiletry bag, right? Like in this bag, I have my typical stuff that I bring on a trip. I have travel size of like the shampoo and conditioner I like and toothpaste and travel toothbrush. Again, the hospital has that stuff, but this stuff that I put in there is just like a little bit nicer, the ones I typically bring on a trip. So that's basically my, my toiletry bag I'd bring on a trip. It also has my contacts case and my glasses in there. Okay, so um, the next thing I'm gonna say is that the hospital has pretty much everything you could need for breastfeeding. So they have, you might be able to hear my toddler. They have pumps, they have all the pump equipment, and they have like personal care items like lanolin, which is things that can uh, lubricate and soothe the nipple if you have to pump. You may not even have to pump at all. I will say that I do think it's a good idea now that I'm talking to pack one pumping bra. I actually have to go find mine. I don't have it available because just in case you do have to pump the first time with Paul, he was a preemie. So I did have to start pumping because he couldn't express enough breast milk himself without getting tired out. And I had to hold on the pumps, which was just like really uncomfortable and annoying. And so it's nice to be able to have a pumping bra where you can put the phalanges in it to pump, but I'm really not going to bring any breastfeeding accoutrements to the hospital because they'll have everything. Everything I need and then I'll switch if I have to pump to my own pump at home. I have patients who bring their breast pump to the hospital and have the hospital lactation consultants help walk them through the fit and how to use it and I think that's a great idea if you want to do that. I think that's totally fine and a good idea. I'm not going to do that the first time I actually didn't even have my pump yet because he was early and they hadn't sent it to me yet. If that happens to you, you can rent hospital pumps until your pump arrives at home even after you discharge. The one thing I will bring for breastfeeding is my breastfeeding pillow. This is the My Breast Fen pillow. Other people like to use the Boppy pillow. Whatever you like is, is fine. Again, I didn't have this with my first and I just used pillows and stuff, but it is easier to use a breastfeeding pillow if you have one. So that's kind of the biggest bulkiest thing I'm actually gonna bring. Again, you saw me pack bras. I'm not gonna pack any panties because I'm gonna use those hospital panties and hospital pads. <laughs> okay, the third category of things to think about is stuff to bring for the baby. So really, 
The hospital has everything you need for the baby. They have diapers. They have formula if you're choosing to formula feed or breastfeeding's not working out. They have little hats for the baby and they have little onesies too. So you really don't need much, need need much for the baby. We didn't have really things for Paul. We did have one onesie that we did bring up to the hospital afterwards for him to go home in. And since we like to do surprise sex, we didn't know if Paul was gonna be a boy or a girl. We don't know if this one's gonna be a boy or a girl. We can use the same onesie for him this time. So I'm going to put in this little onesie that's the same that this baby sibling went home from the hospital in for the going home for the hospital outfit. I'm also going to bring this cute little green swaddle that I got gender neutral um, just as a cute swaddle to alternate with, even though those hospital blankets are actually really great to swaddle in. So we're gonna use mostly the hospital things, hospital diapers, hospital wipes, just a little cute going home outfit and another little cute swaddle is really all I'm bringing for the baby. And I guess the breastfeeding pillow is sort of for the baby, sort of for me, sort of for the baby. All right, so whereas I might use a cuter bag, I wanted to demonstrate that this is really all of that stuff that I just packed, except the My Breast Fem pillow fits in this backpack. It's really not a lot of stuff. This is the My Breast Fun Pillow. We're probably gonna pack my stuff and Michael's stuff together. So I might actually take it out of this bag and put it in a little bigger bag. But I used this specifically to show you guys that you really don't need to pack a ton of stuff for the hospital. I see people get overly concerned about this. They really have the stuff you might need. It's just additional stuff for your comfort that you might want. I don't pack anything that I feel precious about. Like those little slippers I had, I packed. I've had those for a long time. I don't mind leaving them in the hospital. This actually happened to me last time. My like, my water broke and so I had amniotic fluid all over my slippers and so I um, trashed them. <laughs> Similarly you heard me talk about like the only things not black I'm bringing like I don't care if it gets blood on it and I leave it there like there's a lot of body fluids going on. If you have someone who's great at laundry with your life that is wonderful but other than that I don't pack stuff I feel precious about or I feel really protective of. I'm really packing stuff that's just like kind of comfortable easy to watch or using the hospital version. So I hope this was helpful that we packed our hospital bag together. I feel super prepared because I actually now have this all in a bag. I had nothing ready with Paul and everything turned out just fine. So if you are getting ready to have a baby, I just want you to know as someone who works in the hospital all the time, as someone who's had a baby and stayed in the hospital, don't feel stressed out about this stuff. You can pack stuff. You can always send a partner or a family member to bring you something if you realize it would make you more comfortable. Some people bring a blanket that's special to them. I think that's great. So whatever's gonna make you comfortable, do that, but please don't stress out about it. As always, don't forget to hit subscribe. Usually these are educational videos. I hope this was educational, but it's kind of a more fun video. Um, new videos every Friday. Take care, y'all.